All right, um, hallelujah for another Sabbath, you know, congregated whatnot. But um, this is a lesson going over um, how um, women should go filter whatever information, any information they get from any outside source to their husbands first. You know, it's mainly pertaining, uh, pertaining to women who are married, but, you know, for women who aren't married, you know, this could be information later on in life and, you know, for husbands as well or men who aren't married, they could use this information later on in life just to, you know, see how you can run into trouble if you bring information without filtering with your husband first. So just like the matter with Eve, you know, if she would have brought it to Adam first, you know, we probably wouldn't have been in this situation. She would have been like, Adam, I heard this. Check this out. What you think about it? And Adam probably would have talked to Yah. And, you know, you would have never been in, been in this situation, probably still be in the garden. But, you know, that's the, uh, the premise of it. And we'll start off in um, 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Did I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. You know how them, like some of these states, <clears throat> they have the thing if the woman is with the man for a while, uh -huh. they marry. Common law? Yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. common law. But what, what, how does that hold? Huh? How does that hold as far as? Uh, yeah, biblical? I mean, that's not, there's no, from my understanding, there's no biblical thing about that in the Bible just because you spend time with them. Because you can be with somebody for 40 years and just be in a fornicating relationship. But uh, in cardinal law, they have laws that say, you know, well, you're with that person fornicating. You're married under their system. If y'all got anything to add to that. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I mean. All right. First um, Corinthians 14 and 40 reads. Let all things be done decently and in order. So, you know, just to establish that Yah is always about decency and order. It's nothing out of order. You know, when we, when we deal with Yah, it's like going to court. When you go to court, you present yourself in a manner well-spoken, uh, thought-out thoughts. You're just not going to court with anything. You wouldn't do that for a traffic ticket or anything. So just like with Yah, when, we, when our actions... In our actions, we need to display ourselves orderly and in, in, in ways that are wise. Um, and to uh, further touch on this, uh, Ecclesiastes in the Bible, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Just to establish what Yah wants to see from us. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yah and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, that orderly aspect. Um, now we're going to go to uh, to establish how and why women, wives especially, need to remember to filter things through their husbands. You know, as as we are beneath, as Yahusha is beneath Yah, we're beneath Yahusha, women are beneath man, and that's the order of it. And we... Man have to go to Yah, Yah, Yahushua got to go to Yah, and when we have issues, we need to remember that, you know, I might not be the best suited for this, and it's, it's somebody better suited to deal with this issue. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While, the, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the adornment of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of Yah of great price. 
For after this manner, in the time old, in old time, the holy women also who trusted in Yah adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and also being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. And that's a big thing for men, for husbands and wife, you know, dealing with each other according to knowledge too, because that can hinder your prayers. And sometimes, you know, you might think what's going on while my prayer's not working. Do I got bitterness toward my wife? Do I got bitterness towards my husband? You know, that can hinder situations. Verse eight, finally, be ye all of one mind. And one way to be of one mind, because if the wife, this is that because this was lessons on, if she's going this way and she's not filtering things to her husband, it's impossible for that marriage to be of one mind. Because at the end of the day, this is a person that you married, y'all married each other, exchange vows or whatnot, and y'all have to be on the on the same page. Because if you're not, that's how the devil creep in, just like the matter what happened to Eve. And when the devil come in, you know, that's just to destroy your life, your happiness, take your blessings from you, et cetera, et cetera. Verse 8 again. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion, one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary, what? Contrary wise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no gall. Let him extrude evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Verse 13. And who, so, and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers that which is good? So this establishing that being in order, being a subjective wife, you know, to your husband, these things come with blessings. These come with proper guidance and you're, you're keeping your house in one mind, just like when Yahushua HaMashiach said, me and my father are of one mind. And some, like Christianity, they take that out of context because he say we are one mind. They're not together, one person, but they're on the same path. So they're one mind. Yah in front, Yahushua behind. Where he go, he go. Just like uh, the scripture says, my sheep hear my voice. Where I, uh, where I go, they go. They follow. So this is the same thing that you got to do uh in marriage okay and we're going to give some examples of how women display this going to the man to see how to deal with the situation deuteronomy 22 verse 22 to 24 Deuteronomy 22, 22 to 24. Deuteronomy verse 22, verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 22 to 24. If a man be found laying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall Thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with the stones that they die. And the damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Giving this example, what caused her issue and saw what her mind was, 
she didn't cry out. When she was in a situation, just like with Eve, Eve didn't cry out. She kept talking to the devil. This woman in verse 24, because she didn't cry out, she didn't cry out to her husband. She didn't cry out to Yah because she wanted to do this act, um, it seems like. She had to pay the price. And it goes back to the subject of the matter. Going to your husband and filtering with him, crying out to him, trying to get edification, trying to get help on a matter with trying not to do it yourself because you're going to run into problems doing that. And then another example is Proverbs 30, no, Susanna, excuse me. Susanna is going to be in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, 14 to 26. Again, about a woman crying out. And if you have the red Apocrypha, I think it's on page... Book of Susanna... Page 109, if you have a red, red Apocrypha. Okay, this is going to be chapter 1, 14, verse 14 to 26. So, in the background, I'm not going to read the full aspect of it, but uh, two elders were lusting after Susanna. They were trying to uh, uh, fornicate with her, and she wouldn't do this. She's married and whatnot, but 14 to 26. So, when they found, so when they were gone out, they parted the one from another, the two elders, and turning back again, they came to the same place. And after that, they had asked one another. The cause they acknowledged their lust, then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone, and it fell out as they watched a fit time. She went in as before with two maids only, and she was desirous to wash herself in the garden, for it was hot, and there was nobody there save the two elders that had hid themselves and watched her. Then she said to her maids, bring me oil and washing balls and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. And they did as she bade them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. Now, when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran un into her, saying, Behold, the garden doors are shut, that no man can see us, and we are in love with thee. Therefore consent unto us, and lie with us. If thou wilt not, we will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee, and therefore thou didst send away thy maid maids from thee. Then Susanna sighed. And said, I am strengthened on every side, for if I do this thing, it is death unto me. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. It is better for me to fall into your, your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. And it's 26. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. And this is the premise of this right here. She cried. She let out. She let it be known. She went to her husband. She, she just didn't keep it quiet. She didn't uh, continue conversation with them. With, this, with that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. The two elders cried against her. Then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at privy door to see what was done unto her. So this is just an example of like when a woman was in trouble, she just didn't keep it quiet. She just didn't metaphorically keep talking to the devil. She cried out to her husband. She cried out to Yah. She just didn't keep it to themselves, which this is one thing that that's even in the law. When a woman's in danger, she cries out. When a woman's you know, in, in that mindset, she, she has the option of crying out. And that's one aspect that wives must do when they're getting information and whatnot. Filter it through your husband. 
Uh, Genesis uh, 39, verse 7 to 17. Genesis 39, verse 7 to 17. So. All right. 17, I mean, 7 to 17. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, and this is stories about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Uh, Potiphar's wife uh, was lusting after Joseph, but she still did something that uh, gives an example of this. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master's wanted not what is with me in this house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against Yah? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph, Day unto day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the man in the house of the house there within. And she she caught him by his garment, saying, "Lie with me." And he left up his garment in her hand, and fled, and got. Home, him out, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the man of the house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. Just to back up that. <clears throat> When women are in a sense of danger of anything, they cry out. And one form of crying out, again, when you're getting information or something uh, out there to filter it through your husband first. Because you just don't want to be, again, like Eve in the garden. She didn't do that. She didn't do what was customary for women to do. Danger, cry out. Go seek help, especially if you're a married woman. Um now we're going to go to Deuteronomy 23 and verse 17. And to uh, we're going to go on this aspect, we're going to sh see what Yah don't want from wives, from his daughters. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And there's a physical aspect of that, and there's a what we call a spiritual aspect of that, of, of spiritual whoredom. Like if a wife, this is this is notorious in the Christian church in Hebrews too. Well, pastor said this, pastor said this, pastor said this, pastor said this. And she is not subjecting herself to her husband at that time, but to another person, another man is her head, and she is welcoming that rather than saying, uh, going to her husband and discussing this and getting his views on, on that and trying to be in subjection as a wife. Yah doesn't want women to do the spiritual whoredom either, but the physical, that's a given. First um, Sam fifteen twenty three. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty three. If I can find it. Fifteen. Verse twenty three. Samuel fifteen verse twenty three. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. But and this is talking about um uh, uh, what was his name? The King Saul. This is called my Saul, but the rest of this. But the first part 
is the just of it. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Um, I'll read the rest of it just because. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being the king. Talking about Saul. But just uh, knowing that how Yah wants uh, wives to be in submission to their own husbands and uh, and it must be done in decently and in orderly. It just can't just be like, oh, I'm going to get information from this person. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to get myself in this situation. It has to be done decently and orderly because a marriage is supposed to be of one mind. And if you're not of one mind, you can't move correctly. You go in two different directions. Somebody has to be the head and somebody has to submit. It, it, it has to be this way. If it's not like this, it's the same thing with Yah. If we're not submitting to Yah, we're going a different direction. Um, the last one in this aspect is Matthew verse 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Just like for a wife, she cannot have multiple heads. If she's married to a husband, that's her, that's the person that she must esteem, that's the person she must go to, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you do that, that's how confusion starts. That's how, well, so-and-so said this, but what about da 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 It's okay to filter things through your husband, and we'll talk about that later, about a husband uh, being a knowledgeable, you know, y'all will, you're, you're in a situation where your husband is knowledgeable and seeking knowledge, but um, if it's not the situation, just like with Abigail, that's something you can pray about, you know, Pray that Yah opens his eyes and what we were talking about earlier about um, uh, husbands and wives uh, not treating each other wrong because that will hinder your prayers. Uh, if you're if you're going to be bitter because your husband's not getting it or something um, in the situation, you're at your your matter is to pray to that to Yah. And if you do that in a bitter spirit, you know that it will hinder your prayer and your deliverance of that situation. So y you always want to. If, if your husband is not getting it, you want to come from a compassionate perspective. I pray Yah gives you the understanding, the patience, like the fruits of the Spirit in First uh, Corinthians 13. Okay, now we're going to go to um, Genesis 3, verse 1 to 16. Giving examples of what happens when you avoid your husband's guidance. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. <clears throat> All right. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Now, the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord hath made. And, you know, and, and this is a, always a good understanding to understand, like, Satan is probably under Yah, Yahusha, Satan is probably one of the most smartest beings you'll ever run across in your entire life. You're dealing with a wise, cunning, quick on the spot being that's looking for ways to destroy you. And if you allow that one mind to be disrupted, Satan is will instantly come in. Satan is wise and understanding. First uh, one again. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Ye have ye, yea, have Yah said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And this is my point where Eve should have went straight to Adam. Because if you give no time or day to somebody, there's nothing to discuss. If Eve would have just called out to Adam, Eve, Adam could have came there. Hey, what are you doing here, Satan, et cetera, et cetera. And that matter could have been done right there. I'm, I'm married. I don't need to be talking to another man. Verse two. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yah hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for Yah doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat it also. And I'm going to read now a little bit more. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yah. And you see how when Satan comes in and, and, and messes up your, matter, your, your marriage, how you will be ashamed to be in the presence of Yah. They used to hang out with Yah all day, every day. You know, some people believe this was Yah. Some people believe it was Yahushua. One mind, still the same uh, in that aspect. And they were afraid of the being that gave them life, loved them, put them in the garden. But since Satan was a lot allowed to come into their marriage, now they're in this fallen state. I just wanted to point that out. Did you have something? No. Oh, no. no, no, no. Okay. I, was, I was just looking at something. Okay. Uh, the next example is going to be Luke 13, 11 to 16. Luke 13, 11 to 16. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 16. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no ways lift up herself. And, Yah, and when Yahushua saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified Yah. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, and this is to 16, with indignation, because that Yahushua had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which man ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed, and not on, on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, do it not teach one of you on this Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and laid him away to water? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Just give me an example how, you know, how... Uh, when you allow Satan to come in, Satan is coming in for one thing, to destroy you in various means. If Satan can't kill you, how can I afflict you? How can I destroy your marriage? How can I destroy your relationship with your children? How can I mess up your money? It's always how can I destroy something? So when you're when when you wing it and you don't go through your head, you're allowing this wicked, evil being to have access to your life which we know that it's not going to be anything good-hearted uh, sought for you. And the last one is going to be Sirach chapter 26, verse 10. And I'm sure we all seen the movie, uh, what was that movie, the woman who was possessed? Uh, Exodus. Exodus, uh, Exodus. Yeah, 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 that movie, you know, when it can get demonic too. The Exorcist, uh, Sirach 26, verse 10. Sirach 26, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. And one way, you know, wives can do the same thing with that, you know, 
uh, going out from under their husband covering. Well, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go get this information. Somebody's telling me this. Instead of saying, hold on, let me filter this through my husband. Let me make sure this is appropriate for uh, in Yah in my marriage. You know, because we don't want to uh, abuse ourselves with over much knowledge. Somebody's telling her this. Somebody's telling us this. Just like Satan did with Eve. He taught her how to abuse herself with much liberty. Um, the next one is going to be Romans chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. Being that 100% person in Yah. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. All right. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcised is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of Yah. This establishing, you know, you just want to be that good inward person inwardly, not outwardly. You know, a, a, a husband should be able to sleep next to his wife, trusting like, hey, if anything go down, my wife is going to run this by me. If anything comes up, she's going to run this by me. You know, peace in that. And and being that obscene Proverbs 21, uh, 31 woman that Yah wants uh, his daughters to be. Um, another section is going to be Sirach chapter 25, verse 24. This is this remembering how Satan tricked us and wants to continue to trick us, giving uh, examples in this. Sirach chapter 24, verse 25. Sirach 25, 24, excuse me. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. This to, again, to remember, like, you know, even though Satan might empower, like, especially in this society, Satan likes to empower women. Oh, you can do it by yourself. You got this girl. Live your best life. Yahweh is Yah, Yahusha, man, woman. If Satan is putting women in this mindset, you have to fight that off. You know, it, it, no, it's not right for women to be mistreated. Nothing of that nature. You know, the scriptures clearly uh, speak on that. We will speak on that as well, too. But we, we have to be orderly. This understanding, like, hey, I can't do this by myself. I have a head. And not only do I have a head, I have an order that Yah has set up. And I need to submit to that so my life and everybody else's life will work out for the best possibility. The next one is going to be chapter 2, verse 9 to 4. Yeah, but it, it, it mingles in with this. Uh, First Timothy, chapter two, nine to fourteen. All right. In like manner, also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing God godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And, you know, I know some, sometimes that sounds hard, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just the order of things. And if we do by there, if we, I did a lesson years ago about there's safety in the law and danger outside the law. If we play inside the, the, the rules and regulations, we can have fun, we can have blissful lives, et cetera, et cetera. Just like 
we read about all the joyous times and feast days that Zion had when they were in order. There's there's much pleasure in 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 righteousness in doing the righteous acts that Yah is requesting us. If we do that, we'll have a blessed life abundantly. The last one on this one is Genesis chapter three, verse thirteen. Just to remember, like Satan, Satan likes to play on the weaker vessel. And, you know, just like on a track team, they usually have the last person. The, the three first people are usually the weakest of the uh, on the team. But the last person is usually the strongest. Even in companies, they know, hey, this person is the strongest. We put this person here even in the world. So we have to do that in Yah's marriages as well. We have to recognize, well, me being the wife, I'm here. This is my position. My husband, he's at this position. And if we work like this, everything we're going to win is going to work out. But if we don't, Satan is going to creep in and destroy it. Genesis 3, verse 13. Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Going back to my point earlier, you're dealing with a being that is super smart. I don't think none of us, no Israelite that is ever going to be born is going to be as wise as the devil. You know, the, the, the only being probably as wise as the devil is Yah and Yahusha. You know, that, that's above our pay grades to even play with. So just know when you allow this being inside of your marriage without filtering this through your husband, you know, you're, you're asking to be put in a dangerous situation, a heartbreaking situation. Um, and the next part of this is going to be on how husbands are, are, are to deal and what what a woman should be expecting from her husband and what uh, she should be looking at a man in a potential husband. If, if you're not seeing these attributes in a potential mate, um, you know, that should be a flag like, hey, this might not be the person for me. And these are things that a wife should expect from her husband to do to help guide her in that one mindness with with the marriage. First, uh, going back to first Corinthians 14, verse 40. And then we're going to go to verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. And then we're going to jump to verse 33. again. All right. Verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Always got to remember that. Anytime somebody brings you something, I got to make sure I'm doing this. Verse 33. For Yah is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So, you know, this is the standard that Yah wants. Peace, order, and if somebody's bringing... Uh, out of ordinance to your marriage like red flag but that's just a side note um colossians chapter 3 verse 19 colossians 3 19 one more page there we go colossians chapter 3 19 Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. So, you know, uh, when, when you do come up with questions to your husband, you know, he needs to deal with you according to, you know, how y'all would deal with the church. You know, and peaceable, loving, caring, sometimes stern, you know, given the situation. But the, these are the things that when you go to your husband and seeking a mate, these are things that you need to look, look for. Somebody who's not going to be bitter against you. Um, first, first Peter's verse three and seven. First Peter's chapter three, verse seven. Three and seven. First Peter's three and seven. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that again, your prayers be not hindered. All right. The next one is going to be Proverbs 25, verse 2. 
And sometimes your wives are going to bring questions like, hey, man, I don't even know the answer to this. I'm going to have to, you know, and and, 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 and y'all will, you know, you got a husband that's going to try to seek out the answer, would not just not leave it be on the table. And, you know, for again, a, a, a unanswered question, you know, leads to can lead to a dangerous curiosity. So as husbands, uh, we need to do or the best we can to gather an answer. Maybe going on a fast, maybe praying about the answer, but trying to get the answer. Uh, Proverbs 25, verse 2. Let me get there. Proverbs 25 and 2. 25 and 2. It is the glory of Yah to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. This is showing like, you know, as, as husbands... You know, we need to be having our due diligence and studying the word, meditating on the word, practicing the word, because our wives are going to come up with possible questions that we need to make sure we leave a door open for them to uh, be able to answer, uh, ask a question. It's like companies. They have an open door policy in our marriages. We should have an open door policy, you know. Uh, to, to make sure any question or any matter that a wife is being brought to, that she can bring that to her husband and it can be asked and edification can be given. Um, and that, that, that requires patience on wives as well because he might not have the answer at that moment, but husbands also need to be uh, uh, um, um, encouraging their wives like, hey, I'm going to look into this and get back to you on this. You know, we're going we're gonna to find out as much as we can. Judges, to give an example of that, what type of man uh, you should be seeking in that who's in due diligence of this is Judges chapter 6, verse 36 to 40. Judges, this is about Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verse 36 to 40. How, how Gideon showed due diligence of in getting an answer from Yah. You know, he made sure he didn't leave without an answer from Yah. Um, Judges chapter 6, 36 to 40. And Gideon said unto Yah, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put up a fleece of wool in the, in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou will save Israel by my hand, and thou as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morning, on the morrow, and up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wrangled, uh, rain, uh, rig, what's that word? Rig, rig, rig the dew out of the fleece. A bowl of water, and Gideon said unto Yah, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only, the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And Yah did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only. And there was dew on all the ground. This showing you uh, uh, the diligence of a godly man seeking an answer from Yah. You know, uh, th this is the type of man uh, husbands need to be in Yah. And these are the type of uh, 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 hus uh, husbands that wives need to expect. And this is the type of husband, a potential husband that a, 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 a virgin, unmarried woman, whatnot, needs to seek out. Somebody who's really seeking answers from Yah. The next one is going to be, doo -doo -doo, it should be the last one, uh, Genesis 21, verse 9 to 12. Genesis 21, verse 9 to 12. 21, 9 to 12. All right. This is a matter about Abraham and how um, how Sarah uh, brought a matter to Abraham. And, you know, he was confirmed with, by Yah because sometimes our wives will bring a, a wife will bring stuff to her husband um, and she might be absolutely right. And you need to find a man who has a close relationship with Yah because Yah might uh, uh, 
clarify the matter that you brought to your husband by him clarifying it to Yah. Uh, here's a, and here's an example of that. Uh, and it's going to be 9 to 12. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had bore unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And Yah said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And, you know, just, just showing, you know, these are the type of men that we need to be. And these are the type of men that women need to seek out um, to give edification and whatnot. Somebody who has a close relationship with God. So that was the gist of the lesson. You know, if anybody got anything to add or whatnot, you can. Um, if not, hallelujah. All right.